45 degree line. If I go higher, that's a terrible looking trajectory. If I go higher, the, the cannon will go higher in the air, but it will land shorter. Uh, if I go at a shallower angle, it will not go very high and it will not go very far. So the maximum angle that we can get is at 45 degrees. And that's Sig Wacky Air Resistance. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you never miss an update. Leave a comment below to help grow the channel, and don't forget to smash the like button. Okay, so lecture 11, cannons. Well, really, it's, it's 2D kinematic problems, specifically 2D projectile motion kinematic problems. And so what are the kinematic equations in two dimensions? Well, the ones that I want you to know, right, we're going to split this up into two components, X and Y. So in the X direction, which I'll assume is horizontal, uh, which is the direction that will have no acceleration at all, whereas the Y direction will be the, the direction where we have this downward acceleration due to gravity. So in the X direction, we have no acceleration, so the velocity in the x direction as a function of time is simply a constant. So it doesn't even have a time dependence uh, functionally, and it will be equal to whatever the initial velocity in the x direction is, a constant. The value of x as a function of time will be equal to the initial x position plus v naught x times the time. Now the y component is a little bit different. So the y component will have an acceleration. So the acceleration, well actually, I'll, I'll write this up here. A sub x equals zero. So that means there's no acceleration in the x direction. Whereas for y, we have A sub y will have equal to minus g. So what do you want to use? 32 feet per second per second, or 10 meters per second per second. We'll use both in different circumstances. But we'll assume that our y-axis is always going up. Uh, and so this will always be in the neg negative direction. And g is one of those two constant numbers. Now the velocity in the y direction will be equal to the initial velocity in the y direction minus g times t. So minus whatever component we get from the acceleration. This is just like the 1D problems that we've done before. The position function, y, that's how high up we are uh, on the y-axis, will be equal to y naught plus v naught y times t so just like it was for x, but we have the acceleration component acting in the opposite direction, in the downward direction, minus one-half gt squared. And this is completely analogous to the 1D problems that we did for projectile motion uh, before. To really see how to use these, let's just do a simple problem, and we'll call this a cannon problem. Okay. And so what I'll do is I'll have my, my cannon, and I'm not going to worry about the height above the ground of the cannon itself. Uh, we'll figure that uh, maybe it's submerged below the ground a little bit if you want. But then it launches with some angle. And this angle, theta, we'll specify, and with some velocity. And I'll write down a magnitude for the velocity vector here in this direction. And so what happens is we're going to get a, a projectile motion that looks something like this. I will demonstrate shortly uh, that this actually is uh, a parabola, but uh, for now, I think we're all familiar with the general idea of that from experimental observations. When working a problem like this, typically you want to find out something like, well, how far does it go? Right? What is this displacement in the x direction? Uh, in the y direction, right, it's, it's really the same as is this. So let me just draw a little illustration to point out something very important. Uh, I could try and do it uh, manually here first if I were to Let's see, I've done this before, but how did I do it? Oh, here's how I do it. I'm going to flick this vertically and uh, drop this simultaneously. And if you listen carefully, you'll hear that they hit the ground at the same time. There's a little bit of double bounce there, but I'm able to do it one more time. Try to get it nice and level. So, what does that mean exactly? Well, that means that if I have a ball which is kind of kicked over the side, like this. And then I have another ball that's simply dropped at the same time. What we'll find is the 
the y position of the drop ball is exactly the same as the y position of the, the thrown ball, provided I don't throw it with an upward angle, or I don't give it any, you know, initial velocity in the downward direction, or the upward direction. If it's a perfect, you know, push in the horizontal, uh, then this will work out exactly the same. So what does that mean exactly? So if I had a, a rifle and I was firing it perfectly level to the ground, and let's ignore the curvature of the earth, how long is it going to take for the bullet to hit the ground? You know, most people think, oh, maybe it's a few seconds or something like that. And that's, it's just simply not the case. This is exactly how long it takes to hit the ground. If you listen, uh, you'll, you'll hear when it hits the ground. So I, I fire. That's how long it takes to hit the ground. As long as it takes for you to drop a pen from the same altitude as the muzzle of the rifle to the ground, that's how long it takes for the bullet to hit the ground. Because these two directions, the X and Y directions, are completely independent. How do we solve problems like this? Well, how do we figure out how far it's going to go? Obviously, we want to know what X is. And we can let you know X not be 0. Uh, and so that means that X of T is equal to V naught X times the time. Well, what is V naught X? Well, what we can do here to show that this is actually a parabola, I'm going, to, I'm going to solve for time here. So that I get the T is equal to X over V naught X. And I'm going to take that time value, and I'm going to substitute it into the equation for y. And so instead of y as a function of t, I'm going to get y as a function of x. Because wherever I see a t, I'm going to call y not 0, by the way, uh, v not y times t, but not t. I replace t with x over v not x. So now I have the ratio of v not y and v not x. And then minus 1 half g times t squared. Well, t squared is x squared over v naught x squared. So I'm going to write this as 1 over 2 v naught x squared. And I'll put the g up here in the numerator uh, times x squared. And so if you look at that, this is the form of a parabola. So this is the x direction. This is the y direction. So this tells us that what we're looking at when we see a projectile trajectory uh, is the shape of a parabola. Now let's put in some actual numbers and see what this range would be. So let's assume that the muzzle velocity of the cannon, this is the magnitude, is equal to a thousand meters per second. It's about what you get in a, you know, a standard long rifle. And the angle, let's use one of the angles that we've used already, maybe we'll use 60 degrees. To get the range, we want to know what x is at the time at which it hits the ground. So we have to find that time. Once we found that time, we can simply substitute it into v naught x times t, which is going to be equal to 1,000 uh, times uh, the, the x component will be the adjacent, so we use the cosine, uh, the cosine of 60 degrees, uh, which is going to be 1 over 2. So that's going to be equal to 500. Terrible 0, 500. Um, times the time. Times the time. Forgot to put a t there. So 500 times the time. We need to know what the time is. Well, how do we figure out what the time is? And this is what you have to do in physics. You have to think about the problem and try to find a way to find the answer. So to find this time, it's the time it hits the ground. Well, how do we figure that? We can't just set y equals 0 and say when does it hit the ground. Maybe instead we could do something like this. We could say, well, when is the velocity equal to 0? That could be useful. Well, the velocity is equal to 0 at the top of its trajectory, right? That's the, the apex. So when it reaches the top of the trajectory, the velocity in the y direction is zero. So what is that time? This is the location here, right? Well, this occurs, so v sub y equals zero, which is equal to v naught y minus gt. Well, v naught y is going to be, that says that zero equals 1,000 times the sine of 60 degrees, 60 degrees minus e times t. Well, 1,000 times the sine of 60 degrees, the sine of 60 degrees is the square root of 3 over 2, so this is going to be 500 times the square root of 3. Uh, g, since we did meters per second, we'll use 10 meters per second per second for gravity. So that would be uh, minus 10 times t, and that's equal to 0. We can simply solve for t at this point. Doing so, we'll get that t is equal to 50 square root of 3. Just a, a little algebra there. I can now substitute that back in here and get my displacement. Uh, I'll write it like this. So x at the time... 50 square root of 3 seconds is equal to 500 times 50 square root of 3. Uh, 5 times 5 is 25, so this should be 25,000. 
times the square root of 3, and the units, of course, will be meters. So that's about 25 kilometers, 25 square root of 3 kilometers, um, so somewhere around 50 kilometers. All right, so we'll stop here and pick up in the next one. Well, I want to develop a, a, a general range equation. I, actually, I, like, I prefer to solve the problems independently, but I'm just going to show this range equation uh, formula. That way we can ask the question, what is the best angle right, for our cannon to fire? So how do we proceed? Well, first thing we want to do is we want to find, well, how long does it take for the cannonball to leave the cannon and then land on the ground in general? When last time we said, well, we need to know what the time is at the apex, right? So that is when v sub y is equal to 0, which is equal to v naught y minus g times t. So solving for this, we get that t is equal to v naught y over g. Now, I think I made a mistake in, in, the, in the last canon problem, and I, I should have doubled this time, because the time to hit the ground is actually twice this amount. So the delta t that we are interested in, right, which is how long it takes to go from here to here, this delta t is equal to 2 times v naught y over g. So it's twice this problem here. I think I forgot to do uh, the factor of 2. But what's the factor of 2 between friends? So I'm going to now use this value for the time in the displacement. But I'm going to call the displacement the range. So we'll call it r. And that's going to be equal to v naught x times the time. Well, I'm going to use for the time this delta t here. So this is equal to v naught x, 2 v naught x, v naught y, all over g. Well, v naught x and v naught y, you'll recall, are equal to the magnitude v times the cosine of theta, and v naught y is equal to the magnitude v times the sine of theta. So I can substitute those values in here, and I get that this is equal to 2 times, uh, we, we have a v squared over g, because we have two v's in here, and we have the sine of theta times the cosine of theta. And I think I alluded to this earlier, that we would use a trigonometric identity, and as it turns out, there is a trig identity that we can use that says that 2 times the sine of theta times the cosine of theta is equal to the sine of 2 theta. So you can look that up in any uh, trigonometry book. It's true. And so this ultimately says that the range is equal to v squared over g, where v is the magnitude, times the sine of 2 theta. Other than using a gun with a higher muzzle velocity or going to a planet with a smaller acceleration due to gravity, what can we do to increase the range of this? Well, when can we maximize the sine of 2 theta? Let's just think of it as the sine of alpha, where alpha is equal to 2 theta, so we don't have to keep saying 2 theta. So I'm going to rewrite this as alpha. And I'm going to note that alpha is equal to 2 theta. So when is the sine function maximized? Well, you remember that it had a minimum value of 0. That was at 0 degrees. And it had a maximum value of 1, which was at 90 degrees. So the answer is, when alpha is equal to 90 degrees, the sine of 90 degrees will be 1, and so this will be as big as it possibly can be. So if alpha is 90 degrees, that means that theta, which is 2, time, uh, two times theta is 90 degrees, this means that theta is equal to 45 degrees. And so the maximum range that you can get from a gun is at 45 degrees. If I, so I'll write this as the 45 degree line. If I go higher, that's a terrible looking trajectory. If I go higher, the, the cannon will go higher in the air, but it will land shorter. Uh, if I go at a shallower angle, it will not go very high and it will not go very far. So the maximum angle that we can get is at 45 degrees. And that's neglecting air resistance. But we're not worried about that here. And so I think that's all I'm going to say about the 2D kinematics. There are plenty of problems to work on this, and some of these can, will be posted. I think that's all I'm going to talk about for 2D kinematics. The next thing we're going to cover is geometrical optics, because we haven't actually talked about any physics yet, 
And I thought it would be nice to actually talk about some physics instead of just doing math. So that's what we'll be doing next time. Thank you.